You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Indian security forces burst Pakistan-backed terror module in Delhi. Uncertainty looms over Afghan's future as Taliban continues its hardline stance. And Pakistan tries to step up terror activities in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has long been a disruptive neighbour to India. For decades, it has been aiding terrorist organisations on its soil which have attacked different places in the country. Every time, Pakistan denies all allegations, stating that these acts are committed by non-state actors. However, time and again, Indian security agencies have unmasked Pakistan and its notorious agency, ISI. Recently, again, Delhi police busted a Pakistan-sponsored terror module which was planning to target India during festive season, a report. Indian security agencies recently busted a Pakistan ISI coordinated and organized terror module to carry out terrorist activities in different parts of the country. The alleged terrorists were planning to carry off serial blasts and targeted killings in at least three Indian states, including Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, and Maharashtra, in the forthcoming festive season. These terrorists were nabbed at the right time as they were in first stage of their operation. Explosives and firearms have been recovered from them in what was described as multi-state operation. Out of the six arrested, two were taken to Pakistan via the sea route from Muscat, where they were trained to use explosives and firearms, including AK-47. As per the reports, the duo underwent training for 15 days in Pakistan under a major or lieutenant rank army officer named Ghazi. In a multi-state operation, we have been arrested for six people. The special thing is that there are two people in these six who are going to go to Pakistan and go back to this year to train for this year. We have got an input from the agency from the Kindred Agency that some of the cities of the United States are going to do some of the attacks that are going to happen from the border to the border. For years, Pakistani spy agency ISI has been involved in anti-India activities. From 1993 Mumbai bomb blasts to 26-11 attacks, ISI's role in providing funds and training to terrorists was exposed on several such incidents. Just few days ago, agencies in India had intercepted a plot by Pakistan's ISI to trigger bomb blasts in Indian trains laden with migrant workers. The attacks were reportedly being planned across various routes through its operatives based in Punjab. Apart from orchestrating terror attacks in India, ISI is also trying to radicalize Muslim youths. Moreover, Pakistan's notorious ISI is also involved in underworld operations and it has closely linked with global terrorist Daud Ibrahim. The recent arrests of the six accused has once again exposed the nexus of the Pakistan's ISI-sponsored and trained terror modules with underworld operatives. In this case, it is seen that there were two different teams. One team was created in the underworld, which was coordinated by Anis Ibrahim. This team was the work of this team. कि जो वहाँ से फायराम और एक्सप्लोजिव आएंगे, उनको ठीक से सुरक्षित तौर पे बॉर्डर के पार कराकर भारत के विभिन्न शहरों में इनको कंसील करके रखना, जब इनका इस्तेमाल होना है उससे पहले तक। और दूसरा काम ये जो अंडरवर्ल्ड वाली टीम थी, इसका काम था कि फंडिंग ऑर्गेनाइज करना हवाला के थ्रू। 
Pakistan, a country in dire economic situation, should stop wasting time by involving in state-sponsored terrorism. The masters of terrorism in Pakistan should understand that they cannot succeed in disrupting peace in India as vigilant security forces are capable enough to foil all such attempts. If Pakistan still wants to remain a terrorist-producing country, then it should be ready to be destroyed by its own demon of terrorism. Let's move to Afghanistan, where the Taliban have already begun to wipe out some of Afghanistan's gains in 20 years. They have denied women a seat at the cabinet, beaten journalists into silence, and are enforcing their severe interpretation of Islam. The recent incidents of cruelty undertaken by the group portray a messy future of common Afghan people in the country. Take a look. With the return of Taliban's rule in Afghanistan, people in the country are scared for their rights and lives. The Taliban has broken its promises to safeguard women and protect human rights. Women's rights are disappearing from the landscape and news of targeted killings and extrajudicial executions coming every day from Afghanistan. There are further concerns that militants will target Afghanistan's heritage as the Taliban has already started banning so-called un-Islamic practices in the country. Many remain hidden but a brave few from across the country have chosen to speak out about their plight. Many experts believe that the Taliban would not have succeeded in achieving their goal without the help of Pakistan. Common Afghans also believe that terrorism and Pakistan are the two sides of a coin and hence they are demanding world leaders to take action against it. A series of protests are being organized by Afghan citizens living in various countries since the Taliban came to power. Blaming Pakistan for the Taliban's return to power, these protesters are chanting anti-Pakistan slogans like Death to Pakistan and Death to ISI. Many Afghans claim they have no option but to flee from the tough times they see ahead as the Taliban government captured power in Afghanistan after 20 years of American occupation. With its double game in Afghanistan, Pakistan has not only jeopardized Afghan interest, but has also utilized the money funded by the U.S. to attack the U.S.-led coalition forces. To strengthen its influence in Afghanistan, Islamabad has been using jihadi groups like Haqqani Network for several years. Now Pakistan is trying to run the Taliban-ruled Afghanistan government through this Afghan guerrilla insurgent group with the support of Haqqanis. With the blessings of Pakistan, Sirajuddin Haqqani, who is responsible for orchestrating several deadly attacks in Afghanistan, was made the interior minister of Afghanistan. He has a 10 million US dollar bounty on his head as well. Recently, when Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan was asked about Haqqanis during an interview to a global television network, Khan said that they are the poor, misunderstood Pashtun tribe, completely exposing the double game of Pakistan. That is, fighting alongside Americans on one hand and then supporting terrorists at the same time. The Haqqani network has been responsible for some of the deadliest terror attacks in Afghanistan's history. It has 
killed hundreds of Western troops and thousands, let me finish, of, of, of Afghan, of Afghan uh, people. In 2011, you will be aware that General Mike Mullen said the Akani network acted as, quote, a veritable arm of Pakistan's intelligence. This is a group that now has four members in key roles in the Taliban government. Is it any wonder that there is a trust deficit between the West and Pakistan? It is complete ignorance. The Americans did not understand what the Haqqani network was. What was it? Haqqani is a tribe. It's a, it's a Pashtun tribe living in Afghanistan. The Haqqani tribe lives in Afghanistan. Pakistan was one of the first countries to welcome the Taliban's return to power last month, and it still remains in a rejoicing mood. But now, Islamabad has to worry about the consequences of the Taliban's success next door. It is not going to be easy for Pakistan as its leaders may have thought. Pakistan should not forget that the Afghan Taliban has close links with the Pakistani Taliban, both operational and ideological. The Pakistani Taliban would like to replicate what happened in Afghanistan in at least the Pashtun areas of Pakistan. The Taliban is undoubtedly seen as Pakistan's proxy group and intelligence reports suggest that the Taliban's victory along with Haqqani network could not have come without active assistance from Pakistan. Now, amid the return of repressive Taliban regime, the war-torn nation is witnessing a mass exodus and the ones suffering the most are innocent civilians. Today, to talk more on this, we are joined by one such displaced Afghan civilian. Matthew Lamatei, an Afghan who had to leave his country to live in the refugee camps in Germany. <music> Mr. Matthew Lamatei, who according to you is responsible for the current situation in Afghanistan and who as per your analysis is getting the real benefit of current crisis. As everyone is aware, the Pakistan is a terrorist state and she started killing Afghan people for more than 50 years and the current bad situation to came is was also from Pakistan but they are done through the Haqqani network so the Pakistan is the responsible not only for Afghanistan she is the responsible for all the terrorist attacks in the world what do you think is the real objective behind Pakistan's satanic designs? They would, like, they would like to make our country their fifth province, but we won't allow them. We are trying to get our land from Pakistan, which is Khyber and Balochistan, and we will apply to the International High Court for the justice with the Pakistan, why she, she, she is killing our bonds innocent, why she broke the system of Afghanistan government. So she wants to, to wind the land of Devran line and she wants to, to make Afghanistan uh, the, the fifth province of Pakistan, but it is impossible. I tried a lot to collect my Indian friends and, and request them by united to the world community and society, especially the International Peace Council, to claim to them to why Pakistan is not stopping the terrorist activities. Even they killed more than 2,312 United States troops in Afghanistan too. So it needs to be treated and it needs to be revenged. The ripple effect of Taliban's victory in Afghanistan is already making itself felt in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan, which has been widely acknowledged to be in a stronger position with Taliban support, is consistently making attempts to hamper peace and accord in the region. Pakistan-backed terrorists are using direct hit-and-run tactic to target security forces and other influential people in the valley, while also using grenades to attack innocent civilians. A report. 
In a bid to create unrest in the valley, Pakistan-backed terrorist group launched a grenade attack in Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir, during which at least four civilians got injured who were immediately rushed to the hospital while security forces cordoned off the area. There has been a spurt in grenade attacks by militants in Kashmir in recent times. Last week too, three persons including two women were injured in a grenade attack in Srinagar. Meanwhile, a major terror attack was averted as security forces detected and defused six grenades planted by terrorists on the busy National Highway 44 this week. Ever since Taliban has taken over, over Afghanistan, it has given a huge flip to morale and motivation of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. As a consequence, there is a slight increase in violence and on hit and run attacks against the security forces. There will be incidents of grenade attack and there will be incidents of firing on police posts. Indian security forces are absolutely and totally alert and in each and every case they have avoided major attrition to themselves and have succeeded in killing most of the terrorists. In a bid to create unrest in the Kashmir Valley, park backed terror groups have been modifying their terror tactics including hit and run attacks on police patrols this year with five policemen killed in four hit and run cases in Srinagar. Recently, a pall of gloom descended over the entire valley when a police officer, Arshad Ahmad Mir, was shot dead by park back terrorists in Srinagar. The CCTV footage of the incident showed a terrorist shooting the policeman from behind and running away from the scene. As the body reached his native village in the Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir, thousands of mourners collectively condemned his assassination and paid last respects to the sub-inspector Arshad Mir. It was an audacious disapproval of such innocent killings with only one question in mind of common Kashmiri people. Why a young officer who did not harm anybody had been killed by terrorists. See, it's a very tragic incident. We have lost a brave young officer who was just at the threshold of the service. He was learning the nuances of policing. He is, uh, was deputed to a hospital for checkup of an accused person. And while he was coming back from the hospital, he's been shot. He was immediately evacuated to hospital. Unfortunately, he's come to his injury. Jammu and Kashmir has witnessed a slight rise in violence. Terror launch pads close to the border are being active again, with Pakistan-backed terror groups and their associates continuously attempting to foment trouble in the Union territory by making constant infiltration attempts despite a ceasefire in place. After months of fighting along with the Taliban, several terrorists of the banned terror group Lashkar-e-Taiba and jaish muhammad have come back to their homes in Pakistan with a renewed focus on Kashmir. Meanwhile, several intelligence reports also suggest that the Pakistan's intelligence wing Inter-Services Intelligence has been making a devious plot to send the Islamic State Khurasan province cadre to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir with an aim to hit Jammu and Kashmir in a big way. As per the latest intelligence inputs, these ISKP cadres were released from the Afghanistan jails recently and had returned to Pakistan and now the ISI has instructed them to execute its agenda in the valley. These terrorists who came after carrying out brutality in Afghanistan are now only a few kilometers away from the borders of India, which is certainly a cause of concern for India. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. 
Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.